Welcome to Much More on Medicine. I'm your host, Katherine Knorr. Governor Ige has announced that the 14-day quarantine for inter island travel will be lifted on June 16th. I'm sure many of you are looking forward to traveling again, but some of you may have some concerns and questions. I'm pleased to be talking with Senior Vice President of Hawaiian Airlines, Avi Manis, about health and safety in the air and the changes Hawaiian Airlines has implemented because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Manis is responsible for Hawaiian Airlines brand, product, advertising and promotions, direct marketing and direct sales and service channels. Recently, he's been a key player in their COVID-19 response. Mr. Manis earned his BA from Brown University and his MBA at Wharton School of Business. Welcome, Avi. Aloha, thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. And I know we'll get right into it with some important questions for you. Number one, when I travel, one of my concerns is, am I breathing in all the dirty air that other passengers are exhaling? Tell me about circulated air and what Hawaiian Airlines does about that. It, it's a great question. And it's something that I think is often not well understood by our, our guests. And the technology in airplanes has improved dramatically. Uh, some air is recirculated, um, but it's constantly being replenished with fresh air from outside the aircraft. And all of the air that's recirculates through the cabin is run through uh, HEPA filters, these high efficiency particulate filters, which are um, the same ones at the same level that are used in hospitals in sensitive environments. And so any of the air that's recirculated is, um, is, is put through a very uh, efficient filter um, that's effective at removing uh, things from the air that could make you sick. Uh, and um, the other things that I think are important, on some of our aircraft, like the 717s, the air isn't recirculated at all. It actually flows right through. So these are our inner island aircraft. And so there, the air is constantly being uh, replenished. And what you're breathing is, is actually fresh air um, that's been conditioned for temperature, uh, but has come right into the, uh, to the airplane. And so uh, I, I think, um, air quality on the airplane is probably uh, better than a lot of other places you could, uh, you could be breathing. It's probably better than my, in my office right now with an air, con <laughs> air conditioning and I'm in a medical office. Actually, I'm not really on a plane, but uh, I wanted you to think I was. <laughs> um, I think we're all, we're all in a place now where we like to imagine ourselves being back on planes. So I appreciate your, uh, your image. Absolutely. And I got seated really up front today. <laughs> um, so, okay. So now we've, we've taken care of the air. I feel comfortable. I'm not worried about breathing in, you know, um, COVID. And so now let's ask, let me ask you about cleaning procedures. Am I going to have to bring my uh, Clorox wipes and, and wipe down everything around me? Or do you guys clean it yourselves? Well, certainly uh, we've always cleaned the planes ourselves and it's always been a really important part of, uh, of what we do, but the, uh, the advent of COVID has made us rethink how we do every step of the cleaning process. And so we've gone through step-by-step, step, revisited how we clean uh, the aircraft, really focused on applying uh, antiviral agents to the really high touch surfaces. So being really careful about uh, the things you touch like uh, tray tables and, um, and, and, and seat belt buckles. And we've introduced, um, the image that just came up was what was a new device that we've introduced, uh, which is called an electro electrostatic sprayer, which we use to uh, spray a very, very fine mist of an antiviral agent uh, through the whole cabin. Uh, what that does is it will coat surfaces that you can't necessarily get to when you're cleaning with a cloth or, or some other thing. And so um, we think that that even further enhances uh, the cleanliness and the safety of the aircraft. And at the same time, we understand, you know, the last thing I'll say, you mentioned bringing your Clorox wipes on board, and that's become, you know, very much part of people's habit. One of the things that we do on board now and have since, I think, uh, early March is, is passed out uh, sanitizing wipes to our guests at the beginning, because no matter how good a job we do, I think it gives our guests an extra degree of comfort to feel like you have a bit of control 
make sure that you wipe down surfaces yourself. And so uh, people are still welcome to bring their own, um, but we are providing those as an amenity to our guests and understand how important it is when people get on a plane uh, to feel, uh, feel, feel safe and feel like things are clean. Sure. And, you know, I've definitely watched people do that, uh, especially when I flew mid-March, the last time I flew. And, uh, you know, we also, there are a few things on board that we know that other people have been touching, things like the magazine in the seat pocket, or maybe people have been reading a newspaper on board and leave the newspaper. Why don't you tell us about those? Sure. And, and you know, I think Hanaho, which is our in-flight magazine, I think selfishly is the best in-flight magazine in the entire world. And I know our guests really enjoy it and like to take it with them. So it's not an amenity that we want to do away with entirely. Uh, for the time being, we've taken it off, off the aircraft and uh, it's no longer in the seat back pockets because that was a place where I think people were concerned about cleanliness. One of the interesting, this is a little inside airline industry problem, but one of the interesting things that happened as people started bringing more and more of their own uh, wet wipes on the plane is the natural thing to do is to stick them into the seat back pocket. So uh, people were, we were having a lot of the magazine just get damaged by virtue of uh, the, the the wet wipes that people were putting in there. So uh, we've done away with them entirely uh, and uh, in the seat back um, and they'll be available for distribution when you board. So what we would welcome every guest to do is to pick up a brand new copy of Hanaho uh, when they come on board and they can dispose of it or take it with them. Hopefully they'll take it with them as many of our guests like to do uh, when they get off the aircraft. So um, we'll be we'll be doing that for the near term for the longer term, I think we're working with the publishers to try and figure out alternative solutions, whether that's um, wrapping the magazines uh, in plastic uh, or finding some other uh, alternative mechanism for distribution. Because again, content that's in that magazine uh, is really um, something you can't find anywhere else. And I think a really great um, representation of our brand, but also just a great way to get to learn things about life in Hawaii that uh, people didn't otherwise know. Sure. And when I travel in Europe, when you're boarding the plane, uh, they will give you, they pass out magazines and newspapers. They don't have them on the plane already. They actually pass them out on certain flights. So that's another possible idea, I suppose. Um, yeah. Now we're, let's we're constantly looking at, at all the things that we could do. And I think one of the things that is very clear about this is the measures that we're taking now to make sure that people feel safe are going to evolve over the coming months. And they're going to evolve uh, because our understanding of the disease is going to get better and we're gonna have better ideas because technology is gonna come out that helps us improve the cleanliness. And so the most important thing I think that we can do as an airline to keep people safe is to continue to evolve our practices as we learn more, as people's needs change and as, our, uh, as technology improves. And how have you evolved the boarding uh, practice? We've looked at boarding uh, very carefully. That's one of the times um, that you're, uh, you can be around a lot of people. I think anyone who's experienced boarding uh, before has felt um, the presence of others around them and a sense of urgency to get on a plane. Everyone really just wants to get on their way. And it's one of, one of the higher stress times as well. So there may, we've looked for things that we can do that allow for physical distancing, improve the safety of the experience, but also hopefully make it a little uh, lower stress over time for people as well. For boarding, what we've done is to, uh, first of all, put markings in all of the lanes where people wait in line to make sure that people keep distance. And then we will be calling people in, uh, in smaller boarding groups uh, from the back to the front of the aircraft to reduce the amount of contact or potential contact that you have with someone in the aisle. Uh, we'll pre-board those with uh, uh, physical needs to, to have a little more time first, because we obviously wanna take care of our guests with disabilities. We'll pre-board our first class guests so that they can be seated and in their seats at the time everyone else boards. And then we'll board from back to front in groups of anywhere from one to three rows, uh, depending on how full the plane is to um, give people the space and the time that they need to board without feeling like uh, they are up face to face with any of their other fellow travelers. Avi, will the passengers have to answer questions regarding their health or have their temperature taken before they board the plane? 
you know, that's not a function that we as an airline necessarily control. So we're not going to be doing any of that uh, directly. I know um, both at the state and the federal level that those kinds of screening measures are things that are um, being looked at. So today, uh, you know, the, within the state of Hawaii, we've got people taking temperatures both on departure and on arrival in some cases. Uh, and some form of that temperature screening is likely to continue. And I think there's a role for both temperature screening and health questions and other measures as we think about um, a layered system of screening that helps to keep uh, guests safe, but also our community safe as we, uh, as we reopen air travel. And do you have any policy about um, if you know a person either has a temperature, they're coughing or um, exhibiting symptoms, uh, what do you do? Well, I think the first message is really um, not, to, not to travel if you're not feeling well. And that's something that I think uh, now we have to be very, uh, very sensitive to. We wanna make sure that our policies give people the flexibility that if you are sick on the day of travel, you really just, you shouldn't come to the airport and we'll work with people to accommodate that. Certainly if people present at the airport with um, symptoms or anything that would give us concern that they're unwell, we have procedures in place and we've always had these procedures because it's always been an issue that people might show up not feeling well. We have procedures to um, give people, uh, refer people to a secondary medical screening by a medical professional who can assess whether or not uh, they're ready to fly or not. And if they're not ready to fly, we work with people to reaccommodate them at a time when they are. And have you done anything to change your um, seating configuration or how you seat people on the airline so they can maintain social distance? We, we, we are doing our best to try and space people out on the airplane. And obviously physical distancing on an aircraft is a very difficult thing to do. There's just not that much, uh, that much space. Uh, right now, as very, very few people are flying, uh, it's a bit easier. And so we've blocked some seats on our seat map in some cases, uh, on some aircraft, we've limited the, the actual capacity to which we will sell the aircraft um, to, um, to, to maximize the spacing between parties. If you're traveling with your family, we will accommodate you to make sure that you can sit together, but we'll try and leave as much space between people as possible. Uh, but I think those are temporary measures, and it's really our view and the view of the scientific advisors who've consulted with the airline industry that, that being on an aircraft is, is quite safe. There's very little evidence to date, even during the period of time when airlines were flying quite a bit in the early parts of the pandemic, there's been very little evidence of, uh, of passenger to passenger transmission of COVID, um, even in cases that we know of in which people were um, infected and flu or even symptomatic and flu. Um, there, there's been extensive contact tracing done on all of the people who sat within, you know, two or three rows around that person, and um, there are very few, uh, to my knowledge, not any instances in which um, we've seen that happen. And so, uh, I think because of the fact that um, people are all facing in the same direction, uh, you're often not, unless you have a really chatty seatmate engaged in a lot of uh, conversation with people. Um, people are sort of doing their own thing. They're facing the same direction. There are partitions. Uh, between you and the person in front of you. As I talked about, the air filtration systems are really excellent and the airflow is from top to bottom and then out. And so uh, we think there are lots of factors that contribute to an aircraft being a very safe place. When you add to that to the notion that everyone's gonna be wearing a face covering on board, um, we don't believe that it will be unsafe for people to be sitting next to someone in our current aircraft configuration. But we understand that people are concerned about that. And so at least initially, as people get back to flying, we wanna do everything we can to maximize that, uh, that physical distance and spacing on the aircraft. Perfect. Okay, we're taking a short break. I'm Catherine Knorr. This is Much More on Medicine on the ThinkTech live streaming network series. We're talking with Hawaiian Airlines Senior Vice President, Avi Manas about health and safety in the air. Aloha, I'm John David Ann, the host of History Lens on Think Tech Hawaii. History Lens deals with contemporary events and looks at them through a historical perspective or what we call a history lens. Uh, the show is streamed live on thinktechhawaii.com. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Mahalo and aloha.
We're back. We're live. I'm Catherine Knorr, and this is much more on medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. And we're talking with Hawaiian Airlines Senior Vice President Avi Manis about health and safety in the air. Avi, I'm so excited about what you're telling me. I'm feeling much more relaxed. I'm ready to get on a plane. <laughs> Good. All you need is the Mai Tai and we'll be ready to go. I know you got it. And that leads me to a very important question. What about masks? Are passengers required to wear masks? Yes, they they are now. And uh, going forward for the foreseeable future, our guests will be required to wear a face covering of some sort on board. Uh, there are um, uh, exceptions, obviously, for people who have medical conditions that would make it difficult for them to wear a mask and for small children. But everyone else, we'd like to wear a mask, both for their own protection, but also as a courtesy to all of the people around them. Sure. And do crew members wear masks? Yes, that's been the case for some time. Um, all of our guest-facing employees, both on the ground and in the air, um, will also be wearing a face covering and other kinds of personal protective equipment as it's appropriate to the role and the task that they're doing. And so um, they'll have access to gloves um, for tasks where it's appropriate for them to be wearing gloves. We're looking at all kinds of other personal protective equipment to make sure um, that we're keeping our, our, our crew safe, our employees safe, um, but also that we're making our guests feel like they can travel confidently. And the, the other thing um, that I would mention is, you know, if we do have someone on board who uh, becomes unwell uh, or who, is, who needs medical assistance, our crew all have access to full medical grade personal protective equipment um, should we need to assist someone who's, who's unwell. So we've really taken every precaution to make sure that both our employees and our guests are as safe as possible. And if a passenger does not have a face covering, do you have extra that you can provide them? We do, we do have extra that we can provide. We'll ask um, generally as people are boarding to make sure um, that people are ready to travel and have their face covering. Um, but should someone show up and not have uh, a face covering handy, we do have a, sm a small supply that we can provide to people. Okay, and um, if a passenger wants to eat or drink, um, are they permitted to remove their face covering? Yeah, absolutely. As, as people are eating or drinking, um, we uh, understand that they will need to remove their face covering. Again, this is really about sort of courtesy and care to your fellow guests. And so I think most people, when they get on board, will be conscientious about that and wear their face covering when they're not doing something like, uh, like eating or drinking. Okay. And um, I have heard rumor that there are airlines that require passengers to raise their hands to get permission to use the restroom. Are you doing anything like that? You know, I, we don't have any specific plan around that. I know that that is something that people are working on to try and avoid congestion. Um, we've worked very hard as we've designed the layout of our aircraft to make sure um, that the lavatories are available and that we, we spread them out across the aircraft so that it doesn't um, create a lot of congestion. Uh, but certainly, it's a, these can be longer flights, and as we introduce the long-haul flights, we may have to um, think about how we manage that. But in general, we'll just be asking people not to congregate in the aisle um, for the safety of everyone. Sure. And will crew continue to be ser serving food and beverages on flights, or is that limited in any way? It, it's certainly something that we have looked at how we adapt to uh, the new environment and we'll continue to do so. We think that hospitality is a really core part of what we do and it's one of the things that differentiates us as an airline. And so we don't wanna do away entirely with all of the elements of our hospitality that our guests have come to expect. And so we still wanna offer people complimentary drinks and some form of complimentary food. And so we're still doing meal service. We've adapted that to try and minimize contact to reduce the number of times that someone has to interact with one of our uh, flight attendants and to uh, eliminate elements of risk. So uh, we won't be pouring beverages for the foreseeable future. Um, we'll be giving people whole cans of things. Uh, we won't be uh, selling any alcoholic beverage because of the amount of contact that has to happen as you're doing your credit card transaction. And so uh, we really thought through a lot of the elements of, of the process and the mechanics of it and how we can 
um, still deliver uh, the hospitality that people expect and the warmth that people expect when they travel with us, um, but to minimize the risk for guests and crew. And one of my pet peeves is when a flight attendant pours water in a uh, plastic glass and picks up the water by where you would put your lips to drink it with their hands and serves it. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that. I haven't seen it on a Hawaiian flight, but but it, it does bother me. <laughs> you know, it, it is it is something I've I've observed both as a as a traveler and uh, I've had the chance to go out with some of our 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 fabulous flight crew and do some service. And it's something I've done. I've caught myself doing from time to time because it's a really hard instinct to uh to, to unlearn, especially when you're as bad at being a flight attendant as I am. <laughs> but um, it is uh, it, it is something, you know, again, that we try and prevent by uh, not refilling cups, by giving people new cups whenever uh, they ask for something, um, which we know has an, an offsetting ecological impact, which we try and manage as well. But in the near term, the, uh, the risk prevention around COVID is, is a more important priority. And so we'll be looking at all of those things and trying to figure out how we uh, manage those as effectively as we can. Sure. And I have been on international flights that where when you go to your seat, there's a an actual full bottle of water on on the seat for you. And um, and then I found on those flights that the flight attendants hardly ever go through the aisles with water. So I find that kind of interesting. It was kind of like, yes, yes, you get your bottle of water, but you really won't get service. Have you seen that? I've certainly seen that. We we want to make sure that we're giving our guests what they need, but also um giving them an opportunity to interact with our people, because even in a time of um, pandemic, our, our people are, are the very heart of what we do and they're what's very best about our brand. And so uh, they'll be behind a mask um, and they'll be behind personal protective equipment, but they're still um, fabulous people. And we wanna make sure that our guests have a chance to experience that hospitality. Sure, and that definitely has been my experience with, with uh, Hawaiian Airlines. Now, um, are there differences that you're implementing for inner island versus mainland or international um, flights? Yeah, each service is a little bit different in terms of um, obviously how long people are on the aircraft and also the level of service that we deliver. And so we've been operating through this whole pandemic, we've been operating inner island flights and uh, a few flights to the US mainland. Uh, in order to provide some essential air service and get cargo back and forth. And so um, we, we've been doing service all along and each one is a little bit a little bit different. The neighbor island service is obviously quite a quick service. We'll still be um, distributing those sealed cups of, of juice and water that people, uh, people have a fondness for and um, doing that service. For the longer haul service, uh, again, we're still delivering um, a meal and beverage service, but we're doing it in an abbreviated way that um, minimizes contact. And have you implemented any procedures or rules regarding frequency of hand sanitizing for your crew? Uh, certainly, um, that's always been something. I mean, we are in a business of having contact uh, with lots and lots of people and serving food. And so uh, we've always had very, very rigorous standards around uh, hand washing, and I know that our um, all of our uh, guest-facing employees um, take that very seriously, but certainly uh, even more so now. And in light of the challenges we've had for the past couple months, do you have any, um, have you done anything to allow people to reschedule their flights if they couldn't take them due to stay-at-home orders or quarantine? Certainly, I mean, we've had, we've had to cancel the vast majority of our schedule um, starting, um, starting in March. And so um, we have, um, when we've canceled flights, given people the opportunity to get refunds or to take credits for future travel. Um, as people have had to change their plans, we've offered um, the ability to get, to get credits. We've extended the time period in which people can use those out to two years, understanding that uh, people might not be ready right away to get on board. It's been very challenging for us from a customer service perspective. I would be the first to acknowledge we've had we had more requests for people to change their flights in the months of March and April than I think we've we've had in ever had in our history. And so I know that it took us longer than we would have liked to get back to some of our guests. 
I know it's taken longer than we would have liked to process some of the refunds and we're still working through that. Um, but we have a very strong commitment to making sure that when people are ready to travel again, um, that um, we're there for them. And we want to make sure that we're as accommodating as possible from that process. Well, Avi, I can't wait to get on a Hawaiian Airlines flight. And I appreciate you so much today for being here. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been great to talk about it. And um, as the inner island quarantine gets lifted on the 16th, uh, that'll be an exciting opportunity for more people to travel around the islands. And we're excited to think beyond that to the reopening of long haul travel and the opportunity for everyone to uh, get out and, and travel again. And we're excited to welcome people back. Terrific. Well, we're out of time. I'm Catherine Knorr. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We've been talking with Hawaiian Airlines Senior Vice President Avi Manos about health and safety in the air. Thank you for joining us today. Please take care of yourself, wash your hands, and be kind to one another.